right, this is Mr. Chris, and what I've got for you here today is a quick video on the different parts of a dissection kit, which you can see here beneath my head. In a standard dissection kit, you usually have a couple different things. You'll have dissection pins, probes, replacement scalpel blades, a scalpel, a pair of tweezers, and a pair of scissors. Now, dissection probes we're probably not going to use a lot. Dissection probes are used to hold back flaps of skin or flesh that have been cut away. Um, this is a bigger issue in dissections where the specimen has latex in them, which makes the skin and muscle tissue rigid. Since I buy most of our dissections in Abu Dhabi fresh from the fishmonger or from the butchers, you probably won't have to use them, but if you do need to pin something down, you can use these pins. Uh, dissection probes and the tweezers are both used for similar purposes. They're used to manipulate things in your dissection. The advantage of using the probe or the tweezers is that they're smaller than your fingers, so you still have an ability to see them easily, or see your dissection easily. Um, it also makes sure that you don't accidentally crush something while you're moving it around. The, I know that most people are going to want to go for the scalpel first when you want to cut something open, but in reality, what you should be using most of the time is scissors. If we're doing something like a kidney dissection, then yes, a scalpel would be appropriate, but in most dissections, we use these scissors first. And the reason for that is that scissors can cut from both sides of the flesh, which means that you can easily cut something away quickly so that you can expose whatever's underneath. The other advantage is that there's very little risk of cutting what is actually underneath the tissue level that you want to remove. So say you want to remove fat from a heart or you want to cut through a shark's skin, you can actually get the scissors under, on both sides of that, which cuts it, cuts it much faster than a scalpel does. Now, when you do use the scalpel, what you want to do is you don't want to chop your specimen. You want to make smooth and simple cuts. I've got a piece of nectarine here so that I can show you what it should look like. Now, this is just a regular nectarine bought from the store. And what I usually see people do the first time they try and do a dissection is they try and cut it like a piece of cheese. They cut straight down and try and move bits and pieces away in chunks. That's not how you actually use a scalpel. It's not a knife. What it is, is it's a precise opening tool. It's not actually for cutting. So what you want to do, I've made the first little bit here, but you want to make smooth, long incisions. And you go slower than if you were cutting, but you don't have to do it really, really slowly, and what you'll see is the nectarine is slowly opening up, and muscle or flesh will do the same thing. You're going to smoothly cut through, it's going to be slow, and you're going to have a nice smooth cut. It's not going to be jagged, like if you were trying to chop or stab your way through. Smooth, long cuts with the scalpel, you are always cutting away from your body, always cutting away from your partners because scalpel blades are actually quite sharp. If it gets stuck on something and then goes off to the side, you can cut someone very easily with these. So you want to just be gentle, apply pressure, absolutely, but don't rush. There's no need to rush when you're doing a dissection. You want to take your time, do things smoothly, and you can see that the edge of this nectarine, it's very clean. That's what you want all of your incisions dur during the dissection to look like. Now, if your scalpel blade should break, that's okay. Scalpel, bl blade, scalpel blades do that. In fact, they're designed to do that if they get stuck so that you don't end up hurting someone by a blade go flying all, in, all over the place. If that happens, there are extra scalpel blades inside a package in your dissection kit. If your dissection kit doesn't have any for any reason, you can get more pretty easily. They'll be in another kit and you can get one from there. If you do need to replace the blade, just get, my, get me to come over to help you guys out so that the blade doesn't go flying anywhere. 
and so that you don't lose a finger while you're putting the blade back onto the scalpel. Speaking of fingers, when you are doing the dissection, you always want to make sure you have gloves on. Now, I'm just dissecting a nectarine right now, so I'm not wearing them, but in whatever video you're watching next for your class, you will see that I'm wearing gloves. And you always wear gloves because bacteria and stuff get into animals and plants and whatever you're dissecting. We don't want this to get into our hands, then get into our eyes, get into our mouth, get into our body. So you'll always wear either latex gloves or polyvinyl gloves, that's in case you're allergic to latex. Also, one last hygiene note, if you have long hair, hair that is long enough, you can either tie it back in a ponytail or a bun, or if your hair is particularly frizzy, then I will be asking you to tie it back, either using a piece of string, a rubber band, or a hair elastic. This goes for both guys and girls. It's a very practical reason for doing it. You don't want your hair getting into something like blood or ink or even in some cases feces that are coming out of your dissection. It's not very nice, it doesn't smell good, it's unhygienic, and in more advanced labs it can actually screw up your lab. So if you do have long hair, I will ask you to tie it back and you do have to tie it back to take part in the lab. Um, that's all for safety tips. When you're doing the lab, make sure that you're doing everything slowly, carefully, and intentionally. So, have a good day, and I'll see you guys soon.